The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 12th fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you've got a question but you can't call in, Stevie's got your back. You can send me an email. See, please send that off early. And uh, send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we start our day with the sea of green out there. How about that? You've got the Dow up 287 points. S&P's up 50. NASDAQ's up 234. Russell's up 31. Semis are up 135. Tranny's up 175. Gold's off five bucks. Silver's down 48 cents. Lights recruit up 50 pennies. Natural gas up six cents. 30 Treasury is basically flat, printed out 119.22. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, Azimil Holdings, a $34 move over 3%. Monolithic Power Systems, $30, 3.6%. Lamb Research, $26, bucks, 2.5%. Super Micro, 2.3%, 21%. United Rentals, about $21. Bucks. That's a 3% move there. Or Shakers to the downside, HubSpot, down $18, bucks, nearly 3.5%. Align Technologies, $8, bucks, 3.25%. Meta Platforms, down uh, almost $9, bucks, 1.6%. Biogen, off about 6 2.5% move there. And West Pharmaceuticals, down 1.4%. That is nearly a $5 move. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day by taking a look at that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. Where are we sitting? Well, we are now in the extreme, getting towards the extreme overbought condition out there. We are above the plus 150. There's a good the, the good news there. And we closed, uh, we closed just below yesterday. So I don't know where we're going to close today. But let's assume that we're going to close somewhere around this level. Um, this gives us a forecast for the future that we should see higher price. Does not necessarily mean that we'll see it right now, but maybe we will. Why? If you take a look at the advanced decline line, we already had a new all-time high. We had a new all-time high in the advanced decline line out there. Uh, you got the spot volatility explodes, 50-day expense moving average. You know, everything is really set up here for a rally out there. Let's switch from this chart and go over to our white background charts. Let's begin that process. Let's take a look at the daily equity future contracts, kind of go through what it is that they're signaling to and I. And what they're signaling to and I, we take a look at the ES Mini. We know that the ES Mini confirmed a sell the D point top yesterday. Yesterday's bar was a key reversal bar. What's a key reversal bar? Well, it needs three different components. Number one, the market must be in an extended condition. Well, if we take a look at the ES Mini, it's in an extended condition, so that's easy. The second condition, both the high and low need to be exceeded. Well, that occurred yesterday. And then the final condition is price must close one tick, one pip, one penny in the opposite direction of the trend. Well, it most certainly did that. Now, what, trans what is transpiring as we speak right now is the ES Mini is attempting to form a new profile. I have no idea whether this profile will take hold or not. That profile has supported 55.85 and resists up at 56.66. Now, earlier in the session, 
earlier this morning, I had different sets of profiles on my black background system and the white. Now everything is coming to sync here. Here's what we know at the moment. And what we know at the moment is prices trade above that green oscillator and change line for the daily time frame. That green oscillator and change line is at 56.55. That tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions, period, end of story. Doesn't mean that things can't turn around, but if you're asking what are the conditions right now, they are bullish. We're trading above profile resistance, and we are trading above its green oscillator and change line. But wait, Stevie. You said that yesterday was a sell the D point top, and you're absolutely right. So what this tells us, our conditions right now inside the S&P 500 via the ES Mini are neutral. We still have a top in place, but we are trading above resistance levels out there. So its overall signal right now is neutral. We take a look at the NQ, its signal is not neutral. It has a TD9 count top. It has a sell the D point top. It has a Roach momentum indicator top. Sounds like it's trying to top. Well, it is, but there's a new profile that has formed. That new profile is solid. That profile has resistance at 28.66 and support at 22.80. Now, if price were to close below 22.80, then we'd have additional support down at the 1981175. If we close below that, we absolutely would have a change in trend to the downside. Right now, this is, um, you know, it's not exactly neutral, but it's headed towards that level. What would make it neutral? I would say it closed above that green oscillator and change line. The current print there is 26.85. And if we close above that, that would suggest that we go run up towards the profile resistance level. So let's say you had a, a hankering to go short, uh, either the ES or the NQ. In the case of the NQ, you'd love to see it get up that 28.66 level. Inside the ES Mini, well, at this stage here, you pretty much need it. Now, we are in bar number eight today. So even if the ES Mini were to its uh, sell the D point pattern were to fail, it still has a top, still has a top. It still has a chance to form a top between really um, Monday and Tuesday of next week. Now let's take a look at the Dow equity future contracts. Had nice rallies, not as nice as the Russell 2000, but still pretty nice rallies. What we see out here is price is making its way back to its TD9 count breakdown level. And that's at 44.33. And when you get back to a breakdown level, that can be a top, regardless of whether you have a pattern or not. Well, we don't have to worry about that. And the reason we don't have to worry about that is because price is in wave number seven. That is letter G. It's a very small portion of the Chapman wave out there, but it's an important portion. In order for this uh, wave's number seven pattern to uh, form a top or give us a topping pattern, we need to see a higher low. So the earliest that's going to be would be at the close on Monday. In the case of the Russell 2000, big rally. It right now is attempting to form a daily. This is the Russell 2000 equity future contract that we're talking about. A daily A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. But it's also dealing with resistance. That's a prior swing point that formed a Rosemann to indicator top. And that is from the trading session of April Fool's Day. That high is 2186. If price were to close above 2186, then I would say price will go ahead and complete the A to B equals CD pattern, you know, at least the one to one area. And that would get us up towards the 2227 ish range out there. So, how do we summarize this? You still have a top on the daily time frame for the ES, you definitely have a top in the NQ. You are, have a topping signal, but it has not been confirmed inside of the Dow. And the Russell 2000 getting back to a resistance level, it's all-time high. I believe that's where we're back to. Um, it still is resistant, so yeah, we couldn't call it somewhat neutral out there. So let's do this. We were just talking about the Russell 2000, but Hector and Patty, they'd like to take a look at the weekly a to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. So what we're going to do, Hector and Patty's, I'm going to switch over to the IWM because there we've got volumes that we can take a look at. So we come back to the break. That's what we'll do. We'll see you in just a few folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the IWM. We're going to switch over to my black background charts in a moment, just it's got the better A to B equals CD tool uh, on there. And this is for Hector and Patty. So the first thing that I wanted to do here, Hector and Patty, is take a look at the uh, weekly, the daily, and the monthly uh, uh, charts out there, just to see if there's any other signals or anything that we should be aware of. And inside the daily time frame chart, there is not that I see at the moment. Inside the weekly time frame chart, in addition to taking out a swing point, likely, that's a swing point for March 29th, that happened to be a T nine count top. So what we've got going on in a weekly time frame is price is taking out a very key level of resistance out there. So and on a monthly time frame, conditions are bullish. So conditions are bullish on the daily, on the weekly, and on the monthly time frame out there. So now let's go switch over to take a look at those A to B equals C D patterns. And we'll get to those black background charts momentarily. And here what we're going to do is we're going to start off with your weekly chart because that's what you were asking about. So you can see that we're trading above profiles. Now, um, the A point is back here on October 23rd. And uh, your emails, uh, I, I, I can't get back to it that easy out here. So that's the, uh, and I think that's what you were using as well. So that would be the A point out here. The B point is going to be that high that we just looked at, which was the TD9 count top back on March the 25th or the week that began March 25th out there. And that is what, is, what does price do on a weekly basis? It pulls back and tests support. Support was the bottom of its weekly profile. And now what we're doing is we're trading above that resistance level again from March, the week that began March 25th out there. That had volume on that week of 116 million shares. So far, we're at 146 million shares. So yeah, and the re retracement on that B to C leg was a 41% retracement. So it's a valid A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. The one to one price projection would be 241.55. The one to 1.272 would be 255.20. So that's its signal. Let me pull this back even, oh. Now what that would do, so we're not at the all time highs. I just need to pull my charts back. Ah, all I had to do is look at the monthly. Hello, Stevie, wake up. Now what we can see here is that initial price projection level, Hector and Patty, 
the 241.55. That gets us back towards that all-time high that took place in November of 2021 out there. So, yes, you do as long as price closes the day above 211.81. If it does not close above 211.81, we do not have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside on the weekly time frame, at least not just yet. If we take a look at that monthly time frame, we can see that price is trading above profile resistance out there. Uh, it is. Uh, let's just take a look at the retracement levels. So see if there's any other invisible level of potential uh, resistance out here. So we'll go from that high, that all-time high out here back in October or November of 2021. And we'll take that down to where's the lowest low? It's right here. It's uh, where we started the, uh, it's the uh, month of uh, October of 2023. So price is right now at the 0.618 retracement level. And that's at 212.44. So watch that at day's end as well. If we close above that, then we're likely headed to the 226.52 level. So the monthly says 226. The weekly says 241. The daily A to B equals CD patterns at the 215.84 level out there. So as we take a look at that, that's a small A to B equals CD pattern we're looking at. I presume that all the way back here, here, all the way back there being that October 2023 level, that would be the weekly A to B equals CD pad that we're take a look at. And all of these are confirmed by volume out there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope that that provided you with the information that the two of you were looking for. Always great to hear from you. So have a, a, a wonderful weekend out there. And thanks for starting off our day. We're going to go to dude's request next. Now, we're going to have to switch back to those uh, black uh, white background charts here. So if you give me just a moment, we'll have that underway. And we're going to take a look at SBLA key. SBLA K. Woo. Stevie is uh, struggling here. So SBLK, I guess I couldn't be the president. Uh, if we take a look at uh, uh, SBLK, that is star bulk carriers out there. What dude wants to know is what is the potential upside? So as you take a look at the daily time frame chart, dude, what do you see? What do you see here? That's the left-hand panel chart out there. Because I want you, I want everybody, for me to be able to pop up a chart and for you to be able to answer that question. If we can do that, then in my opinion, I've accomplished a ton out there. Because I realize that taking a look at a chart and trying to figure out what that chart is communicating to us is not the easiest of things. But once you do learn it, that is a beautiful thing out there. It just increases the probability. So right now what we can see here is I don't see a uh, – let me see here. So the bar, this is a TD9 count bottom from back on June 14th. And that low is 23.73. Did we ever close below that? No, we closed on that. How about here? 23.82. So you have a TD9 count bottom that is in place out here. You are trading on a daily basis within a new profile it formed yesterday. The support level on that profile is at 23.89. In fact, maybe that's the bottom and the center. That's the bottom and the center. So that should be your strong support level. So you're asking about upside potential. If you see it close below that 2389 level, that's telling you that you're going to see lower price. That's not the message right now, but it could be the message. And the reason it could be the message is because where the rally is stopped today is at that red oscillator and change line. And that would have been your first upside potential level. And that level right now is at 2421. If price can close above that, then your upside potential, at least on a daily time frame, is at 25.10. If we look at the weekly time frame chart out here, price is below its bullish structured profile. It has been below it for the last four weeks. Last week was a bearish signal. What do you mean a bearish signal, Stevie? I mean that last week price rallied right into the level where a counter trend rally would end. And that was the center of that bullish structured profile at 2515. So that says really watch that 2389 level like a hawk out there. So the weekly chart is bearish. Upside potential, well, it's where price tested last week. That would be at the 2515 level. But I'm not telling you that's where price is going to get back to. And well, finally, when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it has a TD9 count top that completed last month. So far, price has pulled back and tested that key level of support, and that's that green oscillator and change line. The current print on that is at 2396 out there. So what I would say right now, these charts, daily, weekly, and monthly, dude, they're saying be very careful to the upside. Not that it can't rally to the upside. They're just right now at 1125 in the morning saying be careful to the upside. So what's that say? What's that mean? That just means use a stop. 
We've got to stop in place, let the market do what it's going to do. ELO, Jeff Lynn wants to take a look at GNRC. So GNRC right now is trading out at 153.82. Looks like a beautiful rally, and it is. And what it's doing right now, that's Generic Holdings, it's forming bar number eight, ELO, of a TD9 count top. It's also testing, I don't know if it's gotten all the way up to it, a prior swing point for May 22nd. That swing point did volume of 745,000 shares. So far in two hours of trading, we're at 506. So it's got volume, pushing that swing point with volume. That's a beautiful thing. But what this tells us, as you get back to a prior resistance area, the Generac Holdings is likely to form a TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top is likely to be between today and Tuesday of next week out there. Um, and I say odds of this forming, uh, uh, forming the TD9 count top on Monday are about nearly 100% out there and then completing that pattern on Tuesday. What's the weekly chart tell us? Weekly chart says we're moving to that same swing point. That's from May. Volume there was 4.9 million shares. So far this week, we're in with 4 million shares. So what do we do typically on a daily basis here? About a million you know, you might come up short with regard to volume on that weekly base. So pay attention to that, if you will, at day's end. Does, is, and and um, as it tests to that high, 155.35, 155.61, it has. So we've got a topping signal that will form Monday and Tuesday of next week on the daily time frame. It looks like you're going to test a rejection of a swing point on the weekly. We'll be right back. July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the euro. This is for G-Man inside the Tiger Sand. We'd like to take a, a short position in it. So if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, one of the reasons that uh, I believe that uh, G-Man is considering that is because we are going to go ahead and complete a, a TD9 count topping pattern today. So, um, you know, what you'd like to see take place uh, there is you'd like to see uh, – You'd like to see some topping patterns on the intraday charts out there. So as we start peeking through those on the 30-minute time frame chart, I don't have one right now. Um, I don't have a topping pattern. It does show a wave number seven uh, signal out there, but quite frankly, that is suspect. I'd really have to start doing this count here from about 3.30 in the morning on the 30-minute time frame. So you might want to do that out there. So I'd say that wave seven signal is somewhat suspect out there. Maybe it's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top, um, you know, next couple of hours or so. The 60-minute time frame chart is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top at uh, 12 noon. It will complete that pattern at 1. Uh, the uh, two-hour chart does not have a top. The 240-minute chart, so you want to probably pay attention to this. Now, this bar here is not going to close until uh, 1 p.m., and that says that if price closes above this TD9 count high, and that's at 1.0899, if price closes above that, that suggests there may be for a further rally out there. And on the five-hour time frame chart, as we speak right now, now this bar here closed at 1 p.m. as well. It's trading above its TD9 count top, and that too would suggest a further rally. So will this uh, daily uh, euro hold that TD9 count top? I don't know that. But I would be more likely to look at going short the euro Sunday than I would sometime today out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, G-Man. I know you want to do it for a day trade. I think that day trade, maybe you start taking a look at it about 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon if you've got that uh, day to feed out there. Let's go to our next request. This is coming in from Dude. And Dude wants to take a look at uh, GCT. So let's see if Stevie can find that chart. I believe it's right here. And that is. So now we take a look at GCT. Your request was upside potential there. All right. You have a daily profile that formed three days ago. Support is at 29.65. You pretty much got down to that level this morning, and so far you rejected that. It still remains below its red oscillator and change line. So it's, even though it's rejected that, it hasn't rejected that in the type of fashion that you and I would like to see. But nonetheless, your upside potential, because you just traded within the consolidation pattern, would be 32.74. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart, hey, says, says Stevie, wait a minute here. Your upside potential is 3330. Don't give dude bad news out there, the wrong news out there, not bad news, but the wrong news. So 3330 is a price level that price would price level. Price needs to close above 3330 in order to even get well yeah, if you get above if you get to 3330, if you close above that, then you'd be above the weekly profile as well as a daily profile. So 3330 right now is that uh, resistance level. That's what I see when I take a look at the charts for GCT. Dude, I hope that helps you out. You also had another request out there, and that's for TW. So let's go take a look at TW. And I think you're also looking for an upside request here. Well, consolidation with inside its daily profile. The range at support is 103.17. The range at resistance, 108.17. Consolidating with inside the weekly profile. Weekly profile suggests to run up to the 109.78 level. So that would say 108.17 is really your upside potential. Now, in order to get there, you need to see a close above 105.31. If we don't close above 105.31, price is likely to make another run for that support area down at the 103.17 level. On a monthly chart, this looks pretty good. So longer term, the monthly chart looks pretty good out there. Just consolidations on the daily and weekly. So, dude, hopefully that provided you with all the information you were looking for. And if not, let me know, and we'll make sure that we get it to you. Sharky wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol HBM. HBM is trading right now at $9.53. It is trading above the top of its profile, and it's trading above its green oscillator and change line. Your question was, is it bullish? What do you think? 
I think that what I just said says, yes, it is bullish out there. Now, what it's doing, it's going to go target a uh, – the but is the potential of a B point of an A to B equals CD. And that's the day of July 5th out there. Now, July 5th, we know the volume is going to be light there. The volume, by the way, was 2.6 million shares. So far in today's trade, you're pushing up with 1.2. That says maybe you're going to do a 3 million share a day. Uh, we have not touched that swing. You'd like to... if. You know, you're pushing into that swing point with volume. Price should go tag that level anywhere between 960 and 980. But if price closes inside that 960 level today because we have the volume, that's telling you to get up to 980. You close above 980, that's going to trigger a daily A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. On a weekly basis, you're trading above its green oscillator and change line. You're trading with inside a bullish structured profile. You're trading above the center of that. Uh, this is a bullish signal as well. 1049 is its price target. The monthly chart is bullish also. No topping signal. Trading above profile, its green oscillator and change line. So your question was, is it bullish? And the answer to that is, based on these charts, yes. Ray in Sarasota wants to take a look at Upstart. U-P-S-T is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, just we had a number of requests out there. I just want to make sure I've gotten through everything out there, especially as we go into a Friday, because it's not like I can say, yeah, well, you know, well we will do it on the next show, but now you got to wait the weekend. We take a look at Upstart. I think Ray just wanted me to do an evaluation of it. So right now we can see that Upstart for its daily time frame has run into resistance, formed a TD9 count bottom. The TD9 count bottom established resistance. That was at 27.22. That's the breakdown level. Now, if price rate can close above 27.22, um, that would be really 27.50 now that we take a look at it because 27.50 is the top of the weekly profile. So you've hit resistance on the daily. Resistance you actually hit during the week, I believe. Yeah, during the – well, I guess that would have been today. That was today. Our high today is at 27.55. So you've hit resistance on the weekly, you've fallen back now, and you're at resistance on the daily time frame, and you're just consolidating inside that monthly chart out there. So I like the bottom. Now, just hitting resistance, does that mean you should sell? No, not necessarily. I just want you to know that you're up at uh, resistance. If I take a look at its consecutive days to the upside, it looks like this is day number eight out here of consecutive moves to the upside. Not that you can't get more, but likely what Upstart should do, because this is bullish, it's giving you a bullish change in trend, is you should get a two-day pullback out there. And it's possible that today will be the beginning of that, uh, and you should get that second day's pullback, and then it should resume itself and move to the upside. So, Ray, good to hear from you, and hopefully that provided the information that you were looking for. You also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol HRXT. I think it probably, I misspelled that, HRTX maybe, um, which is going to take a moment here to populate, HRTX. Uh, yeah, so I think that's what you wanted was HRTX, which is Heron Therapeutics out there. So what's Heron Therapeutics doing? Well, first, yesterday's nice rally stopped right where a counter trend move to the upside would stop, and that's at 334. Today's rally, so far, has stopped at 334. With regard to this instrument, you'd love to see it close above 334. We'll explain that when we come back from this break. We're also going to take a look at Kava for Nicholas, Amazon for Duncan, ABUS for Dan, ENVX for Spokane, and maybe we'll get a few more requests as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So these profiles that we use out here, these TAS market profiles, provide us with some unique, uh, unique pieces of information. And that is, here we have a bullish structured profile. A bullish structured because the center, which is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value within inside the overall profile, 325 to 362, is closer in proximity to the bottom and very very clearly closer in proximity to the bottom than it is to the top. So we have more buyers that are lined up between three and a quarter and 334. Of course, those buyers can turn into sellers. And that's where uh, when you close below the bottom of bull structure profile for more than for two consecutive sessions out there, where counter trend rallies will typically end. It can end at the bottom, but what I've noticed is really it's at center level. Now, in this case here, Ray, it's not like it's telling you to sell because price is still above the bottom of that profile, 325. If price, if price were to close below that, we'd make a run to 318. And if 318 were to fail, that's as we go back and we revisit the lows out there. You don't have that message right now. Um, so watch the 325 level, then 318, and of course watch 334. If price were to close above it, then you'd be on your bullish ways. The weekly time frame chart has a Rhodes momentum indicator top, a wave number seven top, a consolidation with inside its profile. It tested the support zone, the support zone is between 244 and 277. Right now it's dealing with resistance, which if it can close above, that's that green oscillator and change line. Currently printed at 337, let's make it maybe like 340. Then you should get a run up to the uh, four dollar level the weekly uh, the monthly chart looks good because you're trading above profile resistance there so ray uh good to hear from you thanks so much for that request and uh, before we go take a look at copper for nicholas i wanted to share with you something that i noticed this morning as soon as i got to my screens and that's this the nick a225 made a new all-time high yesterday no two days ago on thursday and what did it do yesterday last night this morning it formed. This is you don't see this too often. So when you do see it, you pay attention. Why is that? That is a island reversal top at an all-time high for the Nikkei. Now I can't find a way to really short the Nikkei to be able to give to you, you know, ETFs. There is an ETF uh, that uh, you can an ultra short ETF, but it doesn't match up component to component. So it makes it more difficult to really analyze. Now what price needs to do here is close below that green oscillator and change line on the daily time frame for 10:53. But watch the Nikkei come Sunday evening around nine o'clock because the weekly time frame chart can. Confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And guess what the monthly chart is going to do? 
it's very likely going to form a TD9 count top. So the Nikkei is given some real trouble signals. Not that it can't, uh, you know, the pattern can't fail out there. But here's a chart, which I'm going to go ahead and copy and put into my arsenal just in case it does not uh, fail and it continues to work out there. You just don't see island reversal tops at all-time highs very often out there. So I just want to be able to share that with everyone. Now, if you trade the, trade the futures, um, that's a whole different thing. That's much easier to do. All right, let's go take a look at Kava. Stevie's got to find it. There we go. So we take a look at Kava. This is for Nicholas. And he's just looking for support and resistance. So, Nick, uh, support is down at 74.26 on a daily time frame. That's his TD9 count breakdown resistance. Resistance, I guess, would be the bottom of its profile on a daily basis, 90.11. We take a look at a monthly chart, a weekly chart out here. You have a TD9 count top, and this week you're going to confirm a road momentum indicator top. And it doesn't matter if you've got two tops or one top. The mere fact that you got a top is what's most interesting. Now, support here. The next level of support on the way down is going to be 81.45. Below that, it's going to be 69.83, and below that is 66.15. Resistance would basically be this week's high because it's a uh, uh, because it is a Rhodesman Dominicator top. The monthly chart not provided us with much information out there. So Nicholas, hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for your request. Duncan Steve wants to take a look at Amazon A M Z N. Obviously, the ticker symbol there. And we take a look at Amazon. What is it doing? Well, it's got a TD nine count top. It's a wave number seven top. It has a uh, it has a roach but indicator top out there, and it is trading below profile. Duncan, your resistance level here is that daily profile, 195.98. Now, if it can get back inside it today, it would tell us that yesterday's move is a false break to the downside. Doesn't eliminate the top. We just have a consolidation. And as long as price remains below 195.98, it wants to go to the next lower level. Well, the next lower level in the daily time frame is 182.72. But before we go there, we have to look at the weekly chart. And right now, price is trading on its oscillator and change line or thereabouts. It's just below it, it being 195.73. Now, you can't hold me to the pennies on this because that price is going to change. But if price does close below, let's say 195.73 out there, you'll have a Rhodes Mint indicator top on the weekly chart, and that suggests a pullback to 182.45. That's the top of its uh, weekly profile. On a monthly time frame, you're in bar number eight of a TD9 count, too early to determine whether or not this is going to complete that pattern or not. I'd watch 195.98, and I'd watch that 190, you know, probably 195.98 does it all. That probably takes care of the oscillator and change line as well. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, Duncan and let's go to Dan's request out here and that's a take look at ticker symbol A B U S and I didn't write down the reason why you were looking for that let me just give you the uh, oh I think it was because it tested the swing point and it's pulled back so here's what we've got I'm gonna take a look at the daily time frame I don't think it's gotten all the way up to that swing point which would be the high from June 6 and that high is at um, 364 today's high 365 I take that back so the volume on that swing point, and that's just a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there, the high on the uh, volume on that was 1.6 million shares. This week, we are into it with 405,000 shares. Now, this fits this one where I just found that island top. Mr. Obi-Wan would love to uh, uh, analyze this. He'd tell you, if you can't bust them to the upside, price will try to bust them to the downside. And that's, in essence, what we have. However, the one caveat there is price is still trading within that swing point. And really, in order to bust in the downside, you've got to close below the low of that swing point. That is June 6, and that low is 330 out there. So do we have a top on a, the, with the current program? Do we have any kind of a top? And the answer to that question is we do not. So as long as price stays with inside the swing point, even though it's on lighter volume, even though you're tested on lighter volume out there, I don't know. It kind of becomes a, a toss-up there. We don't like toss-ups, but that's what it is. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is trading into a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That's the week of June 7th. Volume there is 6.7 million shares. This week, 4.9 million shares. So now on a weekly basis, you're going to have a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume, but we're still inside that swing point as well. Perhaps the pullback here might find support if it were to pull back around 344 on the weekly, 333 on the daily. Monthly chart looks uh, mighty fine out there. So that's my take with regard to ABUS. Arbutus Biopharma, it is in day number four of consecutive moves to the upside, 
Uh, if we take a look at this, the normal dance steps here would be you get to, oh, it's day number five of consecutive moves out there. We ought to see a one or two day pullback out here, Dan. So that's what I see when I take a look at the charts and all those tools out there. Hope that helps you out. Let's take a look at ENVX. That is for Bob in Spokane. ENVX is doing what? It is uh, bullish on the weekly, trade above profile, trade above uh, its green oscillator and change line, roads momentum indicator. So it confirmed a roads momentum indicator top yesterday. Key reversal bar here. Traded below yesterday's low, the prior day's low and high, uh, close in, uh, in the opposite direction. It's in extend mode. So you've got a top on the daily time frame. But it's sort of neutral. And it's sort of neutral because price of a profile in that green oscillator and change line. The uh, weekly time frame, uh, that looks really bullish out there. We come back from this uh, breakout here. I'll tell you what the weekly chart is telling you. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. We'll be right back. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at tfnn.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit tfnn.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at ENVX. This is for Bob in Spokane. And Bob, the weekly chart, the reason why it is uh, so bullish looking is because last week completed a uh, TD9 count top, and this week it's taking that out. Now, I don't know where today's close is, so let me just throw a quick caveat out there. As long as today closes above the high from two weeks ago, that high is 1712. This will negate the TD9 count top and certainly suggests that price makes a rally towards its uh, swing point. Now, that swing point out here, which we've already, which we're testing, 
We're testing the low of the swing point, which was also a TD9 count top. That was a week that ended July 28th. That had volume of 49 million shares. This week, we're up into it with 30 million shares. So, boy, talk about mixed kind of signals out there. You're going to get, it looks like, a test and rejection of that swing point on lighter volume unless price closes into that swing point. In order to do that, you need to see a close of... Uh, above 1818 out there 1835 is the daily resistance level and a price can you know close above that that suggests that we move higher but um and it looks like we're going to do that you're just dealing you're just dealing with some volume issues with regard to a swing point out there and the monthly chart for envx is bullish we're trading above the top of its bearish structured profile out there so bob i hope that helps you out john c wanted to take a look at tesla and we take a look at tesla what do we have out here we've got a td9 count top that formed we may even have a sell the d point we don't really need that but all that's led to us a consolidation with inside its daily profile that formed yesterday this is how good those profiles are this is a bullish structured profile and that said that the buy were lined up between 235.93 and 249.96 out there. If we close above 249.96 today, odds favor, even though we've got a top out here, odds favor run back to the top of that profile at 271. The weekly chart on Tesla looks good and bullish. So does the monthly chart out there. Now, the weekly chart did test a swing point that had volume of 407,000 shares. This week, we're into it with 760, 763 million shares. Yeah, so it looks bullish out there. So we're going to go with neutral on the daily time frame. And lastly, let's see if we have just a few moments to take a look at Gene. Gene, Bob and Spokane, this looks very bearish. On the daily, no bottom signal. The weekly, no bottom signal. And the monthly. Looks like Gene is going down for the count. And it's at 92 cents. Folks, have a fabulous weekend, a fantastic Friday. Thanks for all your uh, sharing and input this week. And I'll look forward to seeing you on Magical Monday. Be safe out there. Have a great weekend.